All right, so I've got two versions of basically Tuner Studio put open. I have the first one, which is this is uh, Speed Wino. It's a 0.4 board. And then I have this one right here for Mega Squirt, also pulled open as well. One of the things I want to talk about is overrun settings or fuel cut, deceleration fuel cut. In this case, you'll find these under Mega Squirt underneath fuel settings, and then it'll have overrun fuel cut here. The idea behind this is that whenever you let go of the throttle or you're coasting downhill or on the freeway and getting off the freeway, whatever it is, you're going to cut fuel to the engine to allow the engine to essentially pump through without using gas. So, so using your brakes, it can slow down a little bit faster, not by a whole lot than if you just have the throttle closed, but it will save quite a bit of gas. With Megasquirt, there is a lot of conditions that come into this. You have greater than, then you have the map, and then you have the TPS, and then you have a coolant temperature uh, delay or function that's in there. And you also have um, you know, a delay or basically the idea of what you can do with the ego sensor after it returns. And so there's a couple of little things that you can do there. Uh, some of the Megasquirt ones also have a what I'd consider a hysteresis. So if you start it at 1500 RPM, maybe 1550, and you let go of the throttle and hit fuel cut, well, it would stay in overrun fuel cut until maybe it got down to a certain degree. And that's what we're looking at here. Return fuel when RPM is less than, and that is 1100. This one's a hard value. The other one's more of a hysteresis style where it says, hey, type in the plus or minus on that that you want to run. Totally fine. So. If I were to be at 1400 RPM, let go of the throttle and all these conditions apply, it wouldn't go into fuel cut. I have to be above 1500 RPM. And then uh, once I got below 1100, it would just kick on the fuel and the spark to the injectors and took it back to place from there. With uh, Speedwino, it's kind of the same thing. So if I come over here to Speedwino, they put it in kind of a weird spot though. So in this case, it's going to be underneath the acceleration wizard or enrichment. So in here, here's an acceleration enrichment. And here is my ability to say deceleration fuel cutoff. Theirs is a much more simple kind of cutoff. And look, actually, this one is using the hysteresis as well. And that's the same idea. So basically, I have a TPS threshold of 2%. And I have a cutoff RPM, and then I have hysteresis, so it says if it goes below 1500 RPM and goes down to 1300 RPM, the fuel will return. Now, I like this for a couple of reasons. One of the things I will call out is I'll use Mega Squirt as my example. If I had, so I live in the mountains in Utah, and so if I had a, let's say, uh, barometric correction on, if I was down at my work, not a problem. It starts up, I'm good to go. The problem though is this lower than KPA comes to start to bite me a little bit. When I start up at my house, I'm a much higher KPA. And so as I, if I were to, you know, start at my house, drive down to kind of the lower elevations, um, which is, you know, it's a good swing, not a huge swing, but a good enough swing to the point where this lower than number starts to play with me and it can get a little jerky at times and kind of frustrating. So just be aware, um, a lot of times I basically set this higher, my KPA value was a little bit higher and then I leaned on putting my TPS value to basically a very low percentage. Uh, so my TPS value is basically 1% or 0% and that'll allow it to kick in and then I have my KPA kind of blocking out from there. And that's what I did when I ran Megasport with Speedwino. Just coming back there, um, very simple. With this one, it's actually higher than I remember it being. It usually is at 1%. I don't have noise on my TPS line, so I can set it at 1%, and it's not a problem at all. So just one of those things that's out there you can play around with. This will actually make a big difference whenever you are playing around and driving and uh, want to get a little bit of better gas mileage. So just keep that in mind. Uh, if you're looking to kind of improve how the car feels and uh, in drives in the sense of gas mileage, this is something you can do. One thing to look out for is when it kicks back on. So if you have the hysteresis too high, so 200 val value here, I'd probably have it a little higher than that. If, um, if it kicks on and kicks off too fast where you're higher RPM, you will actually feel the difference. 
it starts to become even more pronounced as you get down into near idle levels. But uh, if you're noticing that uh, when it's engaging the fuel and it's kind of a jerk every time that fuel kicks in and kind of shakes the car a little bit, start coming in here, playing around with the RPM hysteresis. Uh, same thing with uh, mega squirt settings. If you notice that little kick, uh, what you'll want to do is you'll want to go ahead and play with the return fuel when RPM is less than and kind of uh, adjust that so it's a little bit more of a smoother transition. Uh, one of the things you'll see here is after delay in section, seconds. Um, this is one of the things I used to remember with my first BMW car. They had those little miles per gallon at the bottom of the thing. And if you let go of the gas, you'll see it say, hey, you're getting about 40 miles to the gallon. And then all of a sudden it would peg over past the 99 value and be like, what the heck's going on there? That's what they did here is they had a basically a second and a half delay on, you know, the fuel cutoff. And you'd see it peg over all of a sudden on, on, your, gap, on your dash where it had the miles per gallon written down below. So anyway, uh, just kind of take a look there, play around with your settings. Let me know if you have any questions. And uh, yeah, talk to you guys next time. Have a good one.